behalf of the family of Sue McElwain. We welcome you to this celebration of a life that was well lived. It was well lived in Christ, her Redeemer, and who is even now enjoying eternal life which was promised and provided by God through his Son, Jesus Christ. It would be nice to think that in these next few moments we could unravel the mysteries of life that cause us to question and maybe even doubt. But today I believe God would have us move from our earthly view into a larger perspective, an eternal perspective which can become so often clouded with just living our lives in a temporal existence. And so we look to Jesus who said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then he said to Martha, you believe this, don't you? Listen to Job who spoke to God in the midst of loss and sorrow. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and though after my uh, skin worms destroy the body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another though my reins be consumed within me. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Join me in prayer, please. Our eternal God and merciful Father in heaven, from whom we come and to whom we go, we call upon you in this time of pain and loss to ask that you would, in a special way, comfort Brother Randall, Stacy and Benji, Austin and Mallory. Give them the strength at this time, O oh God. Our hearts just want to say before you by faith and with hope, we say hallelujah. We say hallelujah for the, the hope of the resurrection. The, we worship you and we say hallelujah because Christ died for our sins and was buried and was raised the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He's become the first fruits of those that have fallen asleep. And so we are grateful on this day that in Christ we have hope. We cling to the wonderful words of the promise that we just read. I am the resurrection and the life, as Jesus has said. And so we worship you and say, Hallelujah, Lord. Because Sue took you at your word, embraced your promise by faith. And now she is in your presence, a place of unhindered, uninterrupted, unimpeded, unconstrained, and unrestricted joy. You called her home just the other day, and she's laid her burdens down. Hard times will come no more. She said farewell to this world, and she's gone to a place where there's glory all around. And we believe that even now she is looking into your face and worshiping you. This is indeed her day of jubilee. So we worship you and say hallelujah, Lord, because another child has, has overcome and gained the victory of your saving and sustaining grace. The captive has been set free from the pain and brokenness of this world. She trusted you all the way through her momentary affliction. And now she's receiving the eternal weight of glory that is beyond all comprehension. And 
I pray that the Holy Spirit during this service, even right now, will put a groan in each of our hearts to determine to see the inside of heaven. We ask for your grace to help us all to say yes to the free gift that's been offered to whosoever will. Perhaps there is someone here that might think that they're not good enough to get to heaven. I pray that you would persuade them in their heart right now the relentless tenderness and the unconditional grace and merciful kindness of a heavenly Father and the deep love of God that died that we might have forgiveness of sins. And may we all one day join that multitude of hands that are raised in thunderous praise. You are the Lord of earth and heaven. You are the Savior and lover of our souls. Thank you for the assurance that the Spirit gives us today that we are the children of God and that we can live forevermore. And enable us during the remainder of our sojourn here to view our temporal lives in the light of the eternal so that our spirits will grow calm and our vision clear. We shall praise you for every day of grace that you've given to us to live here and prepare for our eternal home. We worship you. We thank you in the name that is above every name. The name that has conquered death. The name of Jesus our Lord.
Sue Ann Rediger McElwain was born on February 25th in Wauseon, Ohio, to Richard and Virginia Rediger. She committed her life to Christ as a 16-year-old and served her faithfully until the end. After graduating from Hope Sound Bible College, Sue taught in Stanton, Alabama, Friendsville, Tennessee, and Kirksville, Missouri. While teaching at Kirksville Bible School, Sue earned a master's degree in elementary education from Truman State University. Sue and Randall were married in Kirksville in 1985. Three years later, they moved to Hope Sound, Florida, where Sue taught at Hope Sound Christian Academy from 1988 to 2013. Sue loved to teach junior high students. More than one student has said, often in surprise, Mrs. McElwain liked me. Ironically, she seemed to like the troublemakers best. <laughs> Under FEA missions, Sue served as a missionary in Taiwan from 1998 to 2000. She taught at the Emmanuel Christian Academy and was a faithful pastor's wife at Gaoshan Bible Holiness Church, where she taught an English class for children, helped in evangelistic summer English camps, and played the oboe in the church orchestra. The only role in which Sue failed was as a retiree. <laughs> Deciding that she did not fit in a classroom with smart boards and computers, she, she retired from Hope Sound Christian Academy in 2013. She was not a successful retiree. After just a few months, she was back to serve as receptionist at Hope Sound Bible College, and she was always ready with a welcoming smile, always willing to listen to the students' personal concerns, and also known as a source of free candy for college students and even professors when they neglected to eat breakfast. Even after she could no longer serve as receptionist due to cancer, Sue volunteered in the Hope Sound Bible College Department of External Studies, helping with record keeping. In the early days of her chemo treatments, one of her main concerns was, will this stop me from doing my job? Dr. Jones needs me. From 2017 to her death, Sue was a devoted pastor's wife at Palm Beach Chinese Christian Chapel in Hope Sound Bible Church. She cared deeply for the members maintaining handwritten lists of needs for daily prayer time. During the sleepless nights of the past two years, Sue would pray for those needs for the church members. Sue loved to travel. She visited the Smokies often, Taiwan, China, the Smokies, Israel, New Zealand, the Smokies, France, Italy, and above all, the Smokies. <laughs> Although Sue loved teaching and serving others, her first love was family. Nothing was more important to her than providing a happy for her husband and children. Later, she welcomed their spouses, Benjamin Stetler and Mall Mallory Seckel, into the family with a wholehearted love. She proudly referred to them as our four and was happiest when everyone was home. The louder the racket, the bigger the smile. She passed away on January 8, 2022, after a two-year battle with cancer. And she is survived by her husband, Randall, her two adult children, Austin and Mallory, and Stacy and Benjamin Stutler, and a brother, Jim and Martha Redeker of Montpelier, Ohio. After a memorial service at Hope Sound Bible Church, her body will await the Lord's return at Cedar Creek Cemetery overlooking the Smokies in Greenville, Tennessee.
prayer of relinquishment by Catherine Marshall. Father, for such a long time, I have pleaded before you this, the deep desire of my heart, healing. Yet the more I've clamored for your help with this, the more remote you have seemed. I confess my demanding spirit in this matter. I've tried suggesting to you ways my prayer could be answered, and to my shame I've even bargained with you. Yet I know that trying to manipulate the Lord of the universe is utter foolishness. I want to trust you, Father. My spirit knows these verities are forever trustworthy, even when I feel nothing. You are there, that you love me, and that you alone know what is best for me. Perhaps all along you've been waiting for me to give up self-effort. At last, I want you in my life even more than I want healing. So now, by an act of my will, I relinquish this to you. I will accept your will, whatever that may be. Thank you for counting this act of my will as a decision of the real person, even when my emotions protest. I ask you to hold me true to this decision. To you, Lord God, who alone are worthy of worship, I bend the knee with thanksgiving that this too will work together for my good. I relinquish really this to you. Amen. Matthew chapter 10, we just read these words. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Before I begin, let me say what a thrill and a privilege it was to work with Sue. She was here on the staff at Hope Sound Bible Church. Her husband Sue was the type of individual just a joy to work with. She was always ready to do that which needed to be done, quick to ask what could we do to help make the load lighter. She was an absolute bright spot on our staff in Hope Sound Bible Church in our ministries, and on behalf of the Hope Sound Bible Church staff, McElwain family, we want you to know that we have been praying, and we continue to pray for you. Sue was the type of person that loved life. <clears throat> she embraced it, and it showed. Some people are this way naturally, as probably was the case with Sue, but her greater impact was felt around the world, not because it was a personality, but because she had met the one who had brought purpose into her life. And she wanted everyone else to have that same experience. She lived her life for her Savior. At the age of 16, we've already heard, she gave her life to Christ and never looked back. She learned early in life that through Christ, you could really, truly love life. If you are here today, you know that she loved life. You could see it in her easy smile, her dry and quick wit, and just the way that she embraced life. Because her sins were forgiven, she was ready for heaven. She wanted to go there, but until then, she embraced life. She loved her family, friends, she loved people. And after hearing that her cancer had returned, this was a big struggle for her. 
I remember talking with Pastor Randall one day, not long after she received the, the news of her second diagnosis. She relayed the struggle. As he was relaying the struggle that she was having to me, his words in this book will kind of shock you. He said, I wish it were me. Because if you ask me, heaven, hope, sound, hmm, I choose heaven. <laughs> But she just loved life. She loved people. She loved, not saying you don't, she just loved her family. But through the bumpiness and difficulties of life, a genuine love came through that could only be seen simply because she gave her heart and life to her Savior. But through her journey, she also lived a life full of service. She gave her life to Christian ministry, Christian service at Sue's request. There are no tributes today. She wanted nothing more than a simple service at most. But over the past few years, a few days, excuse me, social media has been filled with tributes to Sue McElwain. Tributes that tell of how her love and compassion have helped to mold and shape your lives. Many of those today are serving Christ and and if those are there that aren't serving Christ, they still testify how her love and her ministry touched and impacted their life. You see, she did more than just teach English and math and science to junior high students. She loved them. And in doing so, she served them. As you heard earlier, she taught in Christian education both here in the U.S. and in Taiwan. She was a missionary and a pastor's wife and, and an excellent one, I might add. She served the Lord by serving others, and for Sue, it was never about herself. It was always about others, and my question is, how much more like Christ can one be? Even while being confined at home and eventually a chair, a bed, as mentioned, her prayer list continued to grow. Many from this church, our ministries at Hope Sound, the, the Palm Beach Christian, uh, Chinese Christian Church, and beyond, we're praying for on a regular basis. It was all about others. She lived her life for her Savior. She lived her life full of service, and she lived her life in faithful support. Sue supported Pastor McElwain's ministry well. Pastor McElwain has said on several occasions uh, that it has been his privilege to be able to travel around the world teaching and preaching the gospel message and sharing the, the life of holiness. And in Randall's words, Sue has never made me feel bad for traveling. Teaching the gospel and sharing the message of holiness. She's never complained. She's been worried. But she has supported my ministry wholeheartedly. Full of support. But on her journey, she also lived a life that saw some struggles. You see, we all take, we've all taken a journey, and I'll try to explain it this way at some point in time in our lives. For 10 years, the Ellison Hallenbeck family would pack up our bags, fill our coolers, load up our vehicles, and we would uh, fill it full of the things that we felt essential for vacation. We would head towards the outer banks. For the Hollenbecks, their journey would begin in central Pennsylvania and their Tahoe loaded to the capacity with enough lunch meat and cheese to, to feed an army. They headed for Interstate 81 South. Destination out of banks. The last few years, uh, Ellison's journey began right here at Hope Sound. Our Kia Sedona van loaded with enough soda, water, and drinks to keep a whale alive for days. We'd point our van to Interstate 95, and we'd head north, the Outer Banks. Other family members would find themselves in the airports of Fairbanks, Alaska, only their suitcases in a very valuable cooler with fresh halibut and moose meat. Their destination, Richmond, Virginia, where a car would await them to bring them to the destination, Outer Banks. The point I'm trying to make is that all 13 individuals we had one place we wanted to reach, but to get there, we all took different paths. Every one of our lives, every one of our journeys is different. 
For some, it might seem that one journey is one of luxury and ease. Everything they touch turns to gold. For another, it might be the journey that is filled with heartache. At every turn, there's broken relationships, wayward children, and disappointment of any and every kind. For Sue's journey and portions of it, she faced sickness that brought a struggle that we heard about in the poem that was just read. Unfortunately, Sue had met this ugliness of cancer twice in her life. Both were difficult. One, she struggled and was able to overcome. The second, unfortunately, she could not. She struggled with sickness, with her sickness, struggled with the reality of knowing because of the sickness, there now seemed to be in this earth a clearly marked end. And as mentioned, she loved her family, her husband, her ministry life, but until a person has had to really come face to face with the harsh reality that we all know that we're going to die, but there's an ending point somewhere sooner than later, no one really understands that struggle. Even in a heart that is fully surrendered to the will of God. She had that struggle. It was part of her journey. But here's what I want to leave with us this, morning, this afternoon. That because she lived this type of life for her Savior, full of service, support, and though she, because living in this sinful world and broken world, had her own struggles on her journey, she now lives a life of complete serenity and peace forever in the arms of God. On one occasion, while talking with Pastor McElwain, my wife asked, how can we pray for you and Sue today? Just not long ago, he prayed, please pray that Sue would just have a peace about dying. She was torn for her love for family, friends, and life here, and obviously the uncertainty of walking through the valley of death Oh, it's unsettling. And after this conversation, things progressed rather quickly, and I'm not sure what level of peace that she obtained here. But this one thing I do know. Today, she's experiencing complete peace and serenity. As her spirit was ushered into the divine presence of a holy God and her personal Lord and Savior, she was enveloped with a divine and eternal Peace. Revelation 21 4 reminds us that in his presence there are no more tears, for he wipes them away. In his presence there is no more death, for Jesus, his son, has conquered it forevermore. Neither is there any more mourning and crying and pain in this earthly temporal sense because the former things have passed away. I think the songwriter penned the words beautifully when he said, All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. Today, as much as Sue loved life, her family and friends, she would not trade her peace in the presence of her Savior for anything. Sue is safe. She is home. But her death is a reminder to all of us. We're just strangers passing through this earth. This place is not our final home. The life that Sue lived the love that she showed to all and the testimony as to who was the Lord of her life gives us hope. That it says in 1 Thessalonians, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others have who have no hope. I would encourage every one of us, let's purpose in our hearts that we one day will be reunited with Sue so that we may worship God together throughout all of eternity. Let's allow Christ to be our Savior. And let's stay faithful to His Word, His will, and His way. And while every one of us have a different journey and a different path that will, that will allow different things in our lives, let's purpose one thing, that we intend to let that journey lead us to the same destination, and that is into the presence of Almighty God.
We love. Help them under your wings in this season of sadness and loss. Let them feel your loving and strong presence in their heart. As they adjust to life without their loved one, we ask that your spirit will be their constant companion, assuring them of your love and care. We know that our loved one is enjoy your presence when I, and without sickness or pain. We know that our loved one is safe and at peace. We know that someday we will have a great reunion in the sky, where there will be no longer be farewells. Let us look with faith to the day when Jesus will return and we will enjoy the fullness of your promise for eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the entire McElwain family, we do want to say thank you so much for coming and uh, celebrating the life of Sue McElwain. We're getting ready to have a procession out the back. The family's going to follow. And after we are in the back, they are going to dismiss row by row. So if you would just please remain staying seated until your row is dismissed. Again, thank you so much for coming.